One day in 1969, and then again in 1970, the moon rang like a bell. We're gonna talk about why today on Vintage Space. The Apollo lunar missions were all about bravado and beating the Soviet Union to something massive in space. But the missions were also about science, and among the main science goals is understanding what the moon is actually made of, or its internal composition. To understand what's going on inside the moon, the Apollo astronauts left what were called ALSEPs on the lunar surface. These were the Apollo Lunar Experiment Packages. Among these ALSEPs were passive seismic experiments designed to measure shockwaves moving through the moon after an impact. An impact could be a meteoroid strike, or a more controlled strike from a spent lunar module ascent stage or S4B upper stage. Both the lunar module ascent stage and the S4B upper stage were smashed into the moon's surface as part of NASA's inquiry into what the moon is made of. Knowing where these objects would hit and having an array of surface experiments on the moon left by Apollo astronauts, scientists on Earth could measure the information and understand what the moon's composition is. About 150 hours into Apollo 12's mission, after Pete Conrad and Albin had explored the ocean of storms, the crew sent their spent lunar module ascent stage smashing into the moon not too far from where they had originally landed. The shockwave built up over about eight minutes to hit its peak and then took a full hour to dissipate. The scientists on Earth who got the measurements back from the ALSET packages said it looked like the moon was ringing like a bell. Something similar happened in 1970 after Apollo 13's S4B was impacted into the moon, again near Apollo 12's landing site. The shockwave built up and hit a peak after about 7 minutes, and again it took about an hour to dissipate. What interested scientists is that this isn't really something we see on Earth. Typically, a magnitude 5 earthquake, which was about equivalent to what these two impacts caused on the moon, dissipate in a matter of minutes. So why does the moon reverberate more than the Earth? Well, it comes down to moisture, or in the case of the moon, the lack thereof. We know there's water on the surface of the Earth, but there's also moisture in the rock that makes up the planet. This has a profound effect on shockwaves caused by earthquakes. As energy from a shockwave moves through our planet, that damper material acts almost like a sponge, dampening out the wave. The same thing doesn't happen on the moon, because it's so much drier, cooler, and the material that makes up the moon is much more rigid. The energy from the shockwave of an impact or even just a moonquake can travel much more easily through the material that makes up the moon. Knowing how different the moon's internal structure is is great, but it doesn't really mean anything for those of us on Earth, which is everyone except astronauts living on board the International Space Station. But for future scientists and astronauts who may be living in lunar colonies or on research outposts on the moon, they will have to build structures that are far more earthquake or moonquake resistant than anything you might find in California. So do you guys have any more questions about the Apollo Lunar Experiment packages or the weird results the Apollo astronauts found with other experiments in those packages? Let me know in the comments below. And of course, leave me your questions and ideas for future episodes as well. Be sure to follow me on Twitter for near daily vintage space content and with new videos going up every Friday, subscribe right here so you never miss an episode.